Hey, what's up guys, Jeremy here. Let's talk about the different path strategies you can use within the Curve Auto project. Let's get started. Once again, we start with the same example using our Motomen, the dispensing tool, the part, and the Curve Auto project. As I discussed in the last video, here you have the select algorithm uh, section of the Curve Auto project, where you can select between minimum tool orientation change, tool orientation follows path, robot holds objects, or robot holds object and follows path. So let's try to understand what's uh, the difference between those four algorithms. So if you so if you open the files, you will see a CFP for curve follow project algorithms uh, .rdk. So it's an RDK station. Oops. Windows don't like when I'm going over my drive here. Perfect. Okay, cool. So in this uh, station, you will have four robots. So two ABB robots and two Fennec robots. The two ABB robots will show you the difference between minimum tool orientation change and robot uh, tool orientation follows path. And the two Fennec robots will show you the difference between robot holds objects, object and robot holds object and follows path. So if I start with the first ABB robot, I can open the curve follow project for minimum tool orientation change and I can click on simulate here. I will reduce the speed of that station a bit to one, uh, to one, perfect. So here you can see that we are following this curved path. Um, the, the tool here is actually, actually like really uh, reaching all the points or all the normals that we have along the path, so that's perfect. But the tool itself is not rotating uh, in any meaningful, meaningful way. So that's the point with minimum tool orientation change. By default, it will always try to match the X axis of the tool with the X axis of the base, or in fact, put them in opposite direction. So the X axis of the tool will try, will point towards the X axis of the robot base, just like that. So to kind of minimize the rotation around uh, of the tool. So you can modify that orientation starting from this, let's say, uh, default reference. You can decide to rotate around the Z axis. I will show you that in the next video, but that's the main uh, or the, the, the starting point. It's super useful if you're doing things like milling or polishing where you have a rotative tool that is Turning, so you don't really care about the rotation of the tool itself. It's already rotating around the z-axis. You only care about the rotation in terms of uh, x and y. So here it's following and it will help you like minimize the risk of uh, hitting a singularity or joint limits, stuff like that. So that's very cool. On the other hand, if you open the tool, or tool orientation follows path and then you click on simulate here, you will see that the tool is actually following the direction or following the zigzag of the path. So it does that by default, uh, by matching the Z axis, uh, the X axis, sorry, of the tool to be always tangent to uh, the path or always pointing in the direct direction of the next point. So if I stop at this point here, you will see if I bring make that smaller, you will see that now the X axis is pointing in the direction of the next point. By default, in fact, it's pointing in the direction in the opposite direction, like a, uh, it will be a minus X axis pointing towards the next point. But here I added a minus 180 degree or I could have done a plus 180, 180 degrees, sorry. sorry. Um, but yeah, the concept is that they're still the same. We are always tangent to the next point. So if I move to the next point, I'm tangent to the next point. If I move one step further, I'm tangent to the next point. So during the transition between this point and this point, it will reorient the tool to be tangent to the next point. So that's very useful if you're doing, in this case here for, uh, for painting, it was really great because we can cover more ground and we have a better, uh, better chance of have a uh, evenly distributed layer of paint. It's super useful if you're doing, let's say things like cutting, where if you have, you're doing cutting with a blade, you don't want the blade, you want the blade to follow the path or otherwise you will either break the blade or you will uh, break the, or create some damage, damage sorry, onto uh, the material you're trying to cut. So that's not what we are 
looking for. Uh, here I can launch both uh, paths at the same time. So if you don't know how to launch more than one path or more than one or uh, more than one programs and more than one robots at the same time, I have a uh, dedicated tutorial uh, rated to that specific uh, topic in module seven, if I'm not mistaken. Great here, perfect. So I'm gonna press escape here. And now for the two Fanuc robots, this is the difference between robot holds objects. So if I come here, I'm just gonna have to update this one here. And then I simulate here. You can see that we are following the path here to cut, let's say, excess material around that uh, wrestling here pad, just like that. And But here it's really the robot kind of rotating around the tool. Uh, so in this case here, the, pa the part is pretty small, so it doesn't matter much. It wouldn't create a, such a big difference in term of the workspace you would need to uh, to execute that uh, that application here. But if I go here for the, the other robot holds objects and follows path, and I click update and simulate here, you will see now I'm kind of rotating more around my wrist. So it's kind of minimizing the actual um, footprint of the part or like the actual travel of the part in the station. So that might be very interesting if you, have, especially if you have a bigger part, let's say that you're doing some dispensing onto uh, a wind or something like that, which is like way bigger. You don't necessarily want to have the window like kind of traveling in this direction here. You would prefer having, let's say your safety fence or something like that here, and then keeping the window as much as possible towards the robot. Uh, so that would make sense. In any case, anyway, you have both of those. So if I start the main program here, I will have the four um, the four program running at the same time, showing you the difference between minimum total orientation change, total orientation follows path, robot holds object, and robot holds object and follows path. So let's press escape to stop all of that. And then let's go back to our station here. And let's just play with this a little bit. So by default, we have our minimum tool orientation change. So as I explained in uh, with the other example here, by default, RoboDK will match the X axis of the tool with the X axis of the robot base. So that's confirmed. That's what's going on here. Um, I will show you in the next video, like I said, how to rotate around or to modify the orientation. If I go for tool orientation follows path, and I click update and simulate here, it will by default have the X axis of the tool pointing in the opposite direction to the pad here. So here in this case, we are kind of out of reach. So RoboDK tries to adapt. Uh, I will show you in uh, module nine I, or, or already video nine of this module, uh, why it's doing that and how to use it to its fullness and how not to get caught in traps. But here, what I will do instead is just go to select curve. I will right click and then reverse complete path, click done. So this way I'm starting from this point here to that point here, click update and then simulate. And here I have the path like properly followed by the robot. So here the X axis is pointing in the opposite direction. So we are kind of following the path in the X minus direction. And just like that, we can apply our glue. So I do believe that in a case like this one, using the tool orientation follows path can make a bit more sense, depending on what kind of nozzle you would have for the dispensing. So some nozzle uh, don't care if, in which direction you are applying the glue uh, or the, the dispensing the liquid. Some do care a lot uh, about the direction. So if you have a uh, like a 45 degree angle with your nozzle, or if you're trying to, to apply uh, the glue, let's say, or the, the sealant in a sh the shape of, let's say, a triangle, uh, you really need to follow uh, the path. So that's something very interesting here to uh, account for. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for this video. I hope it was helpful. In the next video, we will talk, like I said, about orientation of uh, the tool with respect to the path. So that's the next thing to cover. Uh, it's, I think, another very important video to look at. Again, like I said, all of those, uh, all of this knowledge is also apply applicable if you're doing milling, if you're doing 3D printing, if you're doing stuff that are a bit more complicated or are using other 
uh, advanced path generation features of RoboDK, like machining, like 3D printing, like point photo project. Uh, like I said, the actual window is pretty much the same. The only thing that differs like what you are providing. Uh, therefore, this is this knowledge will be reusable uh, in the future. In any case, have a great day, guys.